Oh, good day there. It's Baron Dodger. This is my statement on former ASIO employee Steve Isonides. He was my and, and actually the corruption which is systemic and profound in the government and for which has victimized me to the point of death, then being resuscitated and then um, covering it up. Um, Steve Isonides was my former partner of five years. We were engaged to be married and um, he was a multimillionaire who exploited me and um, was a narcissist and took advantage of me. Um, um, up until this day, no government agency, including the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, Centrelink, the police, AGIS um, or ASIO, have ever acknowledged that this relationship ever existed. That's called corruption. Um, my reality of living in a relationship with him for five years is absolutely true and correct. And the evidence, um, which you can see below, of um, lease agreements of bank balances in each other's name and um, five years of photos um, absolutely speaks to that fact. It is um, unconscionable that the entire government and all government agencies refuse to legitimise that that is a fact. And as a failed whistleblower and a person victimised by the federal government um, in an unholy and malicious way, um, a fact these days is not a fact, as long as you've got the power and the money and the privilege to um, make it otherwise. It is not okay that um, I have never accepted or been in receipt of a fair, equitable and legal settlement for our time together. Um, let me tell you a bit about him. He was um, a multimillionaire. I feel sorry for him. He was abused as a child as well. Um, and he's a, a manipulative master manipulator and he's managed to convince an entire government that um, the relationship never existed. Now, I actually um, tried to get um, compensation for him. I've never had a lawyer. That's out of balance with the Charter of Human Rights of a person with a disability, which states I should have one. And that's in an obliteration of the UN um, Charter, which underpins all laws in Australian society. I've never been able to get a settlement. And um, that's um, just un it's an, un an unholy amount of abuse and um, delegitimizing my story and my experience. And that's a method of torture and it's a method of gaslighting, which um, not acknowledges um, my experience and my voice. And it serves to um, upset me and demonize me. And it has a name to rob me. Um, and it has. But I've been robbed many times over the years. Um, now, I tried to get a settlement from him. His, um, his lawyer um, got back to my lawyer, of which I had only for a short time, and then they dumped me when they um, were tapped on the shoulder. And um, he's um, just refused it. Now, um, I threatened to blow the whistle on his corrupt finances of putting a million dollars into a tax shore haven um, of um, a house he sold while we were together, which I told him to sell um, because I thought it was bad energy that um, it was made from drug dealing and um, being a drug mule. And um, he owned a house. He sold it for over a million dollars. Everyone knows it, my family, friends. And um, he put it in offshore tax haven and because um, he's greedy and selfish. Um, even while we were together, he, um, uh, I was accepting a pension, which I really shouldn't have because I should have um, declared the relationship, but he manipulated me into um, believing I should receive it because I will lose my autonomy and freedom and I would have to rely on him. So he tricked me into um, receiving it and that was part of the manipulation of him and his greed. <coughs> As the evidence will show, I actually declared the relationship at some point more together and um, he demanded that I go back and say um, that um, we'd broken up or whatever. So um, he was behind absolutely um, the manipulation of me in being received a pension. And I was living off a total permanent disability payout in 2008 from Health Super, one unit of $83,000, even though I've got evidence um, to support that I was insured for eight units. So right there, that's $500,000 that I've never got. And that's unjust and unholy, and it's, um, it's part of my victimization. But the thing is, um, due to my whistleblowing, I get a message on Grinder, and people do follow me on Grinder. Um, that um, he's been done for embezzlement of a million dollars 
and now he wants me and my husky dead. And that's a threat to kill using a carrier service and that's not okay. And there needs to be an AVO immediately put in place so I'm protected. My problem is that um, I've never heard from Steve. He's silent the whole time and he's orchestrating my destruction from afar and he has for a long time. I don't even know if that embezzlement thing is true or whether it was sent to me as an idle threat. If the p police can please acknowledge if it was done for embezzlement, that would legitimize the threat and pave way for the AVO in which I'll be pr pr protected from literally being murdered. And can I say, Steve in his drug dealing days have admitted to me to being present at murders um, at Collingwood um, Town Flats of an Asian man, but three of them were there and they shot him, killed him. And um, I know that he has um, malice uh, with which the potential to kill because he's told me he's been present at murders and, um, and that's an accessory to murder. Um, that's not okay. And um, the thing is, um, you know, um, it, it's a profound um, risk to me to even be calling this out and demanding that I get compensation, but I have no choice because um, if he's already been done for embezzlement, um, then he's, he's, he's got a hit on me and he's acting systemically and politically. And unfortunately for me, the entire Australian government, including Settling and all its agencies, are on board with never acknowledging that the, the relationship existed. That means that I've got a death threat, I've got people after my head, and the entire government is elongating and emboldening that fact and supporting it. And as a failed whistleblower, I have no protection. And I've tried to report this to police and they delegitimize my story, don't listen to the facts, and all they do is simply vilify me for mental illness to the exclusion of all other factors in my life and all other socio-political things that have affected me and my life. So to singularly look at me as just a person with a mental illness is illogical, it's um, not holistic, it's not fair, and it's a method by which Victorian police have abused and vilified me and locked me up no less than seven times in the past two years, each time it being absolutely ineffective for my care and which has left me homeless and ultimately with nothing. And one of the times I was locked up in Werribee Mercy Hospital, basically as a political prisoner, and I admit that I do have mental illness, but that wasn't the reason I was locked up. They're trying to silence me and they put me in there for three whole months um, to punish me for um, calling out the corruption and the whole hospital system was complicit in the corruption because they were protecting their own ass because they were the very hospital that I died in a year earlier and then was revived and then covered it up. <coughs> so my problem systemic and political. The police are on side and um, um, there needs to be an AVO in place. Um, to protect me from Steve, but the people who are putting the AVO in place will be the police and the magistrate, and the magistrate and the legal system are part of this systemic and political corruption, which is abusing me. So I'm at great risk. I live in a secret location. I hear voices and I um, perceive that people know where I am and that I'm being followed and that um, this is a setup. And um, I reckon that ASIO and the Five Eyes know exactly where I am and that they could find me in about two seconds flat if they really wanted to, but they're allowing me just this little bit of peace um, because it's loggerheads. There's a stalemate. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful they'll um, come and lock me up in an asylum because there's a mental health act that's been ruled and the police, when they locate me, will take me to hospital. And, um, or they'll jail me, or they'll kill me, or they'll make it so bad for me in the profound neglect that I'll kill myself. And then mental illness and drugs will be blamed. But really what's happening is a profound and malicious oppression and victimization, which abuses my human rights, and which is an unholy um, form of abuse for a sentient being like me, and a um, person only with the best intentions, who's ever had the best intentions to not harm anyone. But every single day, every public official, cop, and lawyer is complicit in the abuse and the elongation of my suffering and the reduction of my prosperity. And you know what? When you take someone's money, it's not just about singularly taking your money. What it means is an allegory 
in order to destroy you in society, a very place in which, as a citizen, you need money to survive and be part of that society. To destroy someone's money and to intellectually and consciously, we design, destroy them financially, is another way and an allegory of saying, we don't want you, we want to harm you, and ultimately, we want to kill you. And we're all complicit in that, and we will all act to elongate that and never intervene in this political situation. And that is a provable and demonstrable way with which, with which I suffer. And that which this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is malicious, it's vile, it abuses my human rights, and it is a way which um, is really unfair, it's unjust, and this is why I'm calling it out. And it's come to the very pointy end, it's gone to the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet, it's been to all agencies, it's been to um, the um, Federal National Anti-Corruption Commission, and um, this is what it is, a conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice. It's caused me harm, it's literally murdered me, and then when I was revived, it covered it up. And I just, what was the point of this thing? So Steve Isonides is my former partner of five years. It is not okay that um, systemically and politically there is processes in place which delegitimize my experience, which create a false reality moving forward that doesn't acknowledge what is actually a fact and what is the law which states that I'm um, and him are to um, have an uh, equal, fair and um, legal separation of assets. <coughs> now, um, I never wished to be in this political situation. I really didn't. I don't want to be the one. I don't want to be the target of anything. I just want to live alone, peacefully, with my dog, with enough food, medicine and shelter. But even those things have been taken from me because as you know, I've lived as a vagrant um, for the last month prior to this place. Um, and that has been um, not because of um, a weakness or character weakness or impairment on my behalf. It's not because I'm incapable. It's not because I'm not passionate. It's not because I haven't got the intelligence or the drive to succeed. It's because I've been opposed by a conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice at a government systemic level and it's been brutal and it's infiltrated society and people and organisations and my family and everyone's ready to vilify me for madness to the exclusion of everything else. I've advocated for 30 years against shame, stigma, prejudice and discrimination um, that um, people with mental illness and their carers actually suffer. And um, I know what I am, I know what I act for, and I'm okay with myself. And I wonder if all these public officials, lawyers, cops and politicians can be okay with who they are when they know, and I know, and I'm pointing it out, that they have elongated this persecution of me, a persecution which has actually already murdered me. And that's not an okay thing. And the government needs, needs to acknowledge that my relationship with former partner Stefan Isonides actually existed and acknowledged that there's a conspiracy and a cover-up at all government levels, which all my family and friends are on board of, by the way. I don't know how that's possible. I mean, we had two thousands of friends, like when they all knew all together. I don't understand how he's managed to manipulate a whole society and all my family and friends into not acknowledging that that existed. You know... It's actually a pretty admirable thing that that's even possible. Um, that's a method of manipulation which is intelligent, fiercely intelligent, and has managed to corrupt an entire government. It is not okay. And I demand my settlement from Steve Isonides, and I also demand that um, the police and the authorities and the powers that be grant me at least some whistleblowing protection and place an AVO on him. And my problem is, if he doesn't find me and kill me or my dog, then there's other government contractors who are more than willing to do the job. And as I'll explain in later videos, I've been literally forced out of town by police and, and a government contractor has literally run me over in a car when the circumstances were produced and designed that I couldn't go to police. And that maimed me and my dog and it's violent and it causes me harm. The other example of this is, that when I was um, incarcerated in Werribee Mercy Hospital, an underworld government contractor was sent inside the hospital. I know this because when I got in there, there's a dude in there, a trans dude, 
and he had this tattoo, this one, this one, sorry, that one, on his t-shirt. Pretty extraordinary. You wouldn't expect it. You're walking along the street or somewhere and someone's got your tattoo on their t-shirt. And I said, well, that's weird. And um, next thing you know, in the next 15 minutes, he goes to violently attack me inside a public hospital, which is an absurd amount of organized intelligent crime and it's corrupt and has violent um, um, intentions to cause me harm. They sent that guy in there to teach me a lesson, to say, don't speak up, we can um, manipulate the system to do whatever we want, and we can place people to oppose you in whatever situation you're in. And that's the power and intelligence of ASIO, AGIS, and Five Eyes, which is supported by police and supported by the hospital system and supported by everyone. I've literally been violently attacked, the victim of an organized, violent government vendetta. That's not okay. So what did I do? I'm a Buddhist. I don't believe in, um, in violence and I would never be violent or intentionally cause harm to another person. But I was pushed and I was abused for so many years. You know what I did? I absolutely smashed his teeth in. I broke his nose. I smashed him in the back of the head and I pushed him into the concrete before they broke us up. Now, if I attacked someone in a hospital, wouldn't you think that um, a, a person in a hospital who's been violently attacked and beaten up wouldn't make um, a case against me or wouldn't complain about it or wouldn't make it a complaint to the health complaints commissioner or say, hey, I was in the hospital, so what, we had a fight, he beat me up. Why wouldn't he have done that? I'll tell you why, because it would have exposed that he is a government contracted, organized person who was paid to put in there in order to violently attack me and that would expose a violent um, government vendetta that victimizes me. And that's an absurd amount of um, illogical, immoral, violent and unjust form of persecution that's been put on me. So I forget the um, point of this, but <coughs> Steve Isonides needs to be held to account. He's the criminal. He's been putting money into an offshore tax haven. He's a former drug dealer. He's a cheat. He acts with the government and the whole government is also in on it. And um, that proves really quite plainly a conspiracy to further the cause of justice. And right b before the, under this, I'm gonna put the evidence of the, um, the photos together, of the, um, of the leases together, and of the bank balances together, and of also five years of photos. It is um, unquestionably true that I was in a relationship with him and it is a systemic and profound conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice. This has never been acknowledged and there's a cover up. And this is why this um, 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 conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice exists, which victimizes me. It's not okay. Please, will someone acknowledge this relationship existed? <laughs> That's my statement. And Steve Isonides, thanks.